For millions of years, humans have faced some truly horrifying periods, from man-eating carnivores to devastating climates. But in the history of our planet, there was one era where life was pushed to its absolute limit, which had made survival for early humans nearly impossible. We humans, members of the genus Homo, have come a long way since the 2.8 million years of our existence. Today we live in a world shaped by advanced technology and medicine, which has helped us reach an average lifespan of roughly 73 years. But with the comforts of modern life, we often forget just how grueling the journey to this point truly was. Early human lifespans were shockingly low. For example, in 18th century France, people lived to around 27 to 30 years, while in classical Greece it was around 25, and during the Neolithic period it dropped to just 20 years. That said, modern humans or Homo sapiens have had a relatively easier life compared to some other human species. One of the most brutal times was for Homo habilis, a species that lived around 2 million years ago, which had it absurdly tough. The majority of individuals didn't even survive long enough to see their teen years, with the average lifespan being estimated at about just 12 years old, where it was discovered their mortality rate was supposed to be even higher due to the lack of infants and neonates individuals, hence which would have made their life expectancy even lower. A life so short makes the Homo habilis the last human species you'd want to live and wake up as. Surviving as a habilis wasn't just about living through short lives, it was about facing a constantly changing environment that was actively working against you. Being one of the smallest humans to have also ever lived, averaging just under four feet and weighed an average of 80 pounds, their skeletal structure was far from ideal, being more slender and lacking robustness, which made them overall physically weaker compared to later human ancestors. Now imagine being forced to live on a diet that was actively working against you where paleontologists were able to denote they exhibited higher levels of meat-eating seen in other humans, which was implied by their very large incisors that aided in cutting through meat efficiently and their proportionally giant mandibles which were thicker than those of any living ape or human. This meant that they had to rely on hunting and gathering for sustenance and nutrition. However, their skeletal structures and limbs weren't optimal, as hunting meat mostly asked for high-end endurance activity such as long-distance running which is safe to say is a hallmark for our species, the Homo sapiens. Running long distances wasn't only an advantage when hunting, it played a crucial role in survival, adding insult to injury for Homo habilis, who already faced a tragically short life expectancy, with a skeletal structure more adapted to climbing. Their slender, ape-like limbs allowed for better grip and efficient movement among branches, and a more efficient way to escape from swinging from branch to branch, which would have been very useful when being surrounded by predators. Unfortunately, this advantage only mattered if they were fortunate enough to avoid the many killer cats adept at climbing and ambushing from trees. Encounters like these were far from rare, as hunting and scavenging on the open landscape meant sharing it with some of the most terrifying predators of the early Pleistocene in East and South Africa. Direct evidence between predators and the habilis are fairly rare. But when looking over the general 30 potential predators, most have been identified as large cats. One of the most formidable predators that Homo habilis faced was the jaguar-sized saber-toothed cat, a prehistoric nightmare that dominated the animal kingdom throughout their existence. Despite its size being comparable to a jaguar, this beast was far more muscular, a living weapon of raw power and precision. Its razor-sharp claws were designed to tear through flesh, gripping and suffocating its prey before delivering the fatal blow. The saber-tooth's method of killing was nothing short of savage. After overpowering its victim with crushing strength, it would use its two massive, dagger-like fangs to pierce the throat, severing major arteries and nerves in one swift, merciless motion. For the helpless forfatal homo habilis, survival was a fleeting hope. But not all were so lucky, if you can even call it that. There was always the horrifying possibility of being ambushed from behind, and having your entire head engulfed in the beast's powerful jaws, its dagger-like fangs puncturing the back of your skull. Worse yet, Paleontologists have uncovered evidence of an even more disturbing scenario. A habilis's skull bearing puncture marks on the occipital bone, where the attack didn't come from behind but from the front, meaning the human's entire head was inside the predator's gaping maw. 
The sheer force caused catastrophic skull and brain damage and, as if that weren't enough, the victim would have suffocated as their nose and mouth were sealed by the saber-tooth's crushing bite. Yeah, definitely in the top 10 worst ways to go out. It wasn't just the carnivores that caused problems for our fellow species, there were also many of the creatures we know of today, except they were much larger and more powerful. Homo habilis could easily find themselves at the mercy of a variety of massive rhinos, hippos, elephants, and even giant birds. While these animals didn't kill humans as often as predators did, it's not entirely out of the question. Even today, modern Africa sees a few thousand deaths per year from such encounters. As if land predators weren't enough, early humans also had to fear the water. Prehistoric rivers were home to massive crocodiles, including man-eating crocs, species that have been a part of human history for centuries. Research has found that early humans frequently went fishing, not with spears or rods, but with their bare hands. Their slightly longer limbs and smaller stature likely made them faster at snatching fish from the water. But even though fishing seemed like a sensible option for a primarily meat-eating species, the native crocodiles of the time were more than happy to see them as a meal. The most notorious of these belongs to the same genus of crocs seen in our waters today, though a lot larger with the two most well-known being the Crocodilus thorbjarnarsoni and Crocodilus anthropophagus, where it got the anthro part of its name, meaning the human eater, for its taste for people. With the males reaching up to 25 feet and weighing 1.5 tons, and the females growing to 20 feet and 1.2 tons, for comparison in 2011, Lo Long certified by the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest crocodile in captivity, measured 20 feet and weighed 1.1 tons, around the same size as a female anthropophagus, you can only imagine the monstrous size of the male anthropophagus. In fact, there is direct evidence for its human eating diet as two adolescent habilis were discovered with severe marks to their feet, matching the teeth marks to that of this croc. It's believed that the crocs ambushed their prey through first targeting the legs to latch onto, then drowning them through a death roll or causing blood loss. Not exactly a pleasant way to meet your end. One of the most chilling discoveries comes from the fossil of a specimen known as OH7. This specimen shows clear signs of having been a croc's victim. Its foot and leg bones bear broad, deep puncture wounds consistent with the teeth of a giant croc. Unlike the other two Homo habilis specimens, OH7 didn't just suffer injuries, he lost his limbs in the violent attack, ultimately dying. To make matters worse, some researchers believe its death wasn't solely caused by the croc, but actually a feline carnivore, whereby upon examining its upper body, paleontologists noticed its parietal bone had shallow groove marks which didn't resemble marks from that scene in crocodiles, but had an uncanny resemblance to that of a giant cat. Unfortunately, this meant for our homo species friend that a giant cat had taken a chunk out of its skull. Ouch! Adding to these dangers, the climate itself was often brutal. Early humans faced dramatic temperature fluctuations, harsh winters, and intense summers. As during the Pleistocene period, Africa experienced a period of intense fluctuation in climates resulting in cold and increased aridity, causing scarcity in food sources and in extreme cases leading to systematic starvation. The habilis bodies weren't built to endure these extreme climates, which forced them to focus more on saving energy and scavenging meat to supplement their diet, making the difference between survival and death closer, as this would have definitely brought them more in contact with other hungry predators experiencing similar conditions. Competition produced from these harsh climates may have led the habilis to experience multiple encounters with Homo erectus, whereby paleontologists had found habilis remains discovered in the same area of not just one, but two Homo species, including the Rudolph Phoenix and Paranthropus boise. It's not impossible that some interactions ended violently suggested by known fights for territory between Homo erectus and Homo neanderthal. A fight between Habilis and other Homo species would be a losing battle for several reasons. Firstly, Homo habilis had one of the smallest brain sizes among human species, averaging between 500 and 600 cubic centimeters, less than half the size of Homo erectus. This likely resulted in a significant intelligence gap as Homo erectus was capable of using controlled fire and crafting tools like picks and knives. Secondly, 
Homo habilis was the smallest homo species of its time, making one-on-one -on -one confrontations highly unfavorable and likely disastrous. However, it wasn't all that bad. Despite the danger and the struggles, early humans were also incredibly adaptable. Their lifestyle forced them to be around animal corpses, allowing for easy access to creating tools. Ways of communication weren't out of the picture as well. Perhaps the extremely high mortality rate was the thing that ended them. But one thing is certain, being a homo habilis was the worst life you could ever ask for.